This is Liz and Annie and a bunch of your colleagues here for the next installment of how to get proficient with Zoom to make sure everybody knows what they're doing with the remote teaching. So just in case you can't tell, I'm here with Becca and Kate and of course Annie, Erica, who's out of town and on a beach for the <laughs> duration of this, Rachel Wu, and then Megan, who's decided uh, she's off camera today. So you get to see a variety of different options. So the first thing I'm going to show you is an actual skill, which is how to make people other than just yourself co-hosts of your meeting. So if you have a lecture and you have a bunch of students in your Zoom room, you might want to give your TAs the ability to also be hosts, which gives them a little more power and more of these options down at the bottom that we've been talking about how useful they are. So the way you do that is to go manage participants. So in my room, all the people who are in my room currently show up over here. And I can also get, uh, just in case I couldn't see everybody at once, I could get this list of everybody's status. So if I wanted to as the instructor, I showed this in another video, but I could come down here and I could click mute all so nobody can talk but me, which is really helpful when you're uh, being bossy or needing to say something you don't want students interrupting you. And if I didn't want people's videos on, I could go in and shut them off too. So I could do that. I could unmute everybody if I needed people to like chime in about something. Um, they have options that I don't have down here because this is my room. So I have these kinds of options like mute people when they come in, make the annoying sound when people come in. I don't recommend checking that, blah, blah, blah. I can lock the meeting so no one additional could come in if I felt like it. People who are participating also have an option to raise their hand. So Annie and I will make another video from a student perspective. You can actually just raise your hand on the video. Uh, but maybe one of you guys can go click on participants and then uh, under your own thing, raise hand. Yeah, so you can see Megan's raising her hand. I can see it over here and I can see it. I can see Erica. Thank you, Becca. Everyone's doing great. So now if I wanna be uh, kind of bossy, again, I can come over here and I can lower all hands. No questions allowed right now, guys. I'm talking and Kate's applauding. I'm assuming my decision to do that. So if students have a question, they can raise their hand. They can also just do it on their video. That might be easier if it's like a group that you can see. Okay, so thank you. <laughs> Everyone put your hands down. Okay, so over here, uh, if I were looking for a certain person, I had a really long list of students, I could obviously just type their name and find them. That's also helpful for your students. So they can type the TA's name and have the message go just to the TA if they want to chat with them. But if I wanted to make Kate, Kate's my TA for this, I want to make Kate more powerful than she currently is, I would make her a co-host. So I go in there, yeah, Kate's going to be my meeting co-host. Okay, Kate is now the co-host. Did you get some sort of like indication that you now have additional powers, Kate? I had to unmute myself to say this, but yes, additional powers have been granted. Okay, I'm also going to make Annie a co-host. I'm I don't I think we can make as many people as we like a co-host. Yeah? Okay, so now you guys can probably in the participants, manage participants thing, go over there and like lower people's hands, do that kind of thing. Is that right? Can you all put your hands yep. up again, please, if you are not the co-host? Thank you. Oh man, I did lower a hand. Okay. So it's confusing because it seems like you're high-fiving, but you're just lowering their hand. <laughs> so ideally your TAs could kind of keep track or monitor like people in your uh, lecture who are raising their hand, have questions. Your TA can chat them privately, lower their hand, then chat them privately, kind of like a flight attendant on a plane, turning off the light and then asking what the problem is so that they don't have to ask the whole lecture. And yes, thank you. We have discovered uh, utility for the little uh, emoji reaction things down here, I guess. Okay, so that's the actual useful skill to show you how to make other people the host so that you're not trying to manage the entire room. Your TAs can also do that. You just have to give them uh, the same kind of like overview powers that you typically have. Now, while we're here, a couple other things that might be jumping out to people would be really handy to know how to do. Uh, Rachel and Erica, would you guys unmute yourselves, please, if you're able? And Rachel, no. Hi, Rachel. So Rachel has, hi. hi, Erica. And also Megan is not got her video and she's muted right now. So you can see all the different options for how you can be participating in a room. So Rachel has decided to not have video on and instead of the black screen, she set a profile picture, which I think is of her. So you can go, if you're uh, in the Zoom room, you hover over your own profile, your own picture, your own little um, participant square go up here to this three dots corner, click on it, and it will allow you, 
oh, not, I can't do it to Rachel, but I could do it to myself. It will allow me to edit my profile picture. So my default is like one of my, like, I don't know, like web page photographs that just shows up if my video is not turned on instead of just a black screen with my name, but I could set any profile picture that I might like. So I could do that instead. Okay. So if you wanted a picture to appear, that's a static picture. You do it like that. Now, uh, Erica's got something fancier going on. Erica has a background. So we can technically all do this. This requires a lot of processing capacity. So I'll show you what happens when I try to do it. So the way you do it is to come down here to your little video icon, click on the arrow next to it and choose virtual background. So when I do that, it gives me these options of like a bridge in San Francisco, some grass and space. And oh, I can do it now, that's weird. Uh, but it was giving me a warning all earlier today that I don't have, it's just making my teeth really white. Do you guys see that? Um, I don't have a strong enough computer. So if I uncheck, I have a green screen because I actually don't, it gives me the error message here. So my OS has to be better and my computer has to be faster. So I can't actually do it. Um, you can also upload a picture if you wanted to have something. If you wanted to hang like a green, oh my gosh, it's still behind me. Um, like a green thing behind you and actually use a green screen, you could do that. Erica is showing us all the different options that we could have. Okay, so now I guess she's in space. So, <laughs> okay, I'm going to, I'm going to quit mine because it sucks. Hang on. None. And again, you can upload a picture of your own choosing for the background too. So if you didn't want students, <laughs> if you didn't want students to see, uh, oh, nice job, Kate. <laughs> Uh, what your house looks like, or you, like, I don't know, you don't want to clean the room behind you or whatever when you're doing a lecture, you can just use one of these things instead. Annie, would you mind turning yours on so we can see the nightmarish version of what happens when you don't have a strong enough computer? Yes, indeed. Uh, let me do that for you. Okay. Uh, I too will attempt to be in space. Um, I'll move it to where it was doing the extremely nightmarish version, mm -hmm. which I believe was over here. <laughs> Is this it? And now it's just doing it on my sweater. Yeah, so your, your sweater is a wall. It's not quite as bad as it was before. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work quite right. It's at least not going over my face this time. Mm -hmm. But it is pretty creepy. So unless you have a computer like Kate's and Erica's, I would say don't do it. What is your background, Kate? So this is a picture that's from, like, it's a place I've actually been, and that seemed to work fine. Oh, okay. Oh, here we go. There. <laughs> if you want to be the yeah. space, Whoa. this might happen to you. Just FYI. <laughs> okay. So as the instructor, if you're going to do this, or if your TAs want to do this, just use it judiciously. You may want to test it out. You can test it out with me or Annie before you commit to having one of these backgrounds that can get kind of creepy. <laughs> you can always go back to a static profile picture if you so choose. So, okay, good luck with these new tricks and more videos coming soon.